going to start. The sky splitter has been hovering there for ages. When can we board and see what's inside? Is this how long life species live? Everything proceeds so slowly. The effectiveness of anticipation in my emotional center is at an all-time high. Oh, I need to drink some coolant. Relax. The Realm Keeping Commission will send boarding notices to all ticket holders. The Gazette said the Sky Splitter will fire a salute before the ceremony starts. I saw the schedule for the first day of the tournament. Can you believe the Ringmaster accepted four challenges? And he's just a kid. So, who are you betting on, Bardo? I'm betting on neither. I lost all my credits betting on Roboball games in Tykean. This time, I've decided not to rely on probability games to accomplish my target of getting rich. War dance. <sighs> there you are. I heard you and Mr. Don Hung went to meet the judges, and then a riot broke out in the Shackling prison. I was so worried about you. <sighs> Thank goodness you both made it out safe. There was a revolt in the Shackling prison. Fortunately, we were protected by the guards until the Cloud Knights arrived to rescue us. I was planning to take Miss March and Yun Lee to Stargazer Navalia to see the Sky Splitter up close. But we stumbled upon a group of suspicious Foxians carrying official identities. They were acting strange, so out of curiosity, we decided to follow them. It turns out they were actually Boris and disguised as Foxians. It seems they infiltrated Stargazer Navalia in order to prepare for Hule's escape. And we foiled their plans by pure chance. I wonder who provided them with those disguises. And how many more Borison have taken advantage of the war dance to infiltrate the ship? Yeah, I heard them too. But I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint them. I've already reported to General Jing Yuan that I'll give up my role as the Ringmaster. The security of the Lafu is more important to me than anything else. I need to fulfill my duties as a Cloud Knight Lieutenant before taking on the honor of being Ringmaster. Those tourists just want to see some good sword fights. Anyone can participate in this kind of tournament. It doesn't have to be me. The real challenge lies beyond the ring on the Sky Splitter. If we don't capture the fugitive soon, Hule will wreak havoc. Obviously. There's someone behind the scenes orchestrating this prison break, intending to spread chaos. If we fail to thwart their evil plan, what honor will be left for us to uphold? Well said. You may be tiny in stature, but your ambition matches that of the Yao Qing's warriors. Hey, th this has nothing to do with my height. Yes. I suggested to Yan Qing that we find a place to have a decent meal. A hunter must be well fed before the hunt. You still have a good appetite, even in the face of disaster. You truly are the Merlin's Claw. Please finish the food quickly so we can get to work, General Fishao. Well, that's not up to me. Dig in. I called you here so you could enjoy the food. Me? Uh, this isn't the time for a leisurely meal, and this is way too much for me. <laughs> oh. You'd give me time to enjoy a meal, but not yourself? Ever since you encountered those Boris and spies, you've been so busy that you've hardly eaten anything. You can't defeat Hule on an empty stomach. Take your time. 
Enjoy the meal and calm yourself. Uh, Ule's whereabouts are still unknown, and they've even taken Mr. Zhao Cho hostage. The longer we wait, the more complicated the situation becomes. Zhao Cho always said I'm the most impatient person among the Cloud Knights, and I can't argue with that. So, there's no reason for you to be more anxious than me. I've fought against Boris and Abominations for years, and I know their ferocity and cunning well. The Borsen were clearly well prepared for this prison break, and now they are staying in the shadows. They have no reason to rush out into the open. When facing cunning and ferocious prey, the hunter must be more patient, biding their time to seize the golden chance for a decisive blow. Once Hule loses his patience and reveals himself, that's when we'll strike. <sighs> but when will that time come? Like I said, it's only one meal away. General Hua Yan, the Skyfaring Commission has finished its preparations. Do you have any other instructions? Representing the consensus between the Merlin's Claw and the Divine Foresight, I'll step in as the temporary commanding officer of the seat of Divine Foresight and oversee the Six Commission's affairs on the Lofu. What is the situation at the Shackling Prison? Hule made a quick escape and even sealed the gates of the prison. As of now, the Cloud Knights have re-established contact with the staff inside. The good news is the two nameless who were trapped in the Shackling prison are safe and sound. <sighs> um, I know I shouldn't use the word great given the current situation, but I'm relieved that she and Don Hung are safe. <sighs> We've lost contact with one of the messengers from the Xianzhou Yaoqing. The Borisin have likely taken him hostage. Don't worry, Yuko. Fei Shao is leading the wolf hunt operation, and you know how capable she is. I have no doubt about General Fei Shao's capabilities, General Hua Yan. I'm more concerned about the Wardens. According to the plan, the ceremony will begin in six hours. The Sky Splitter will be activated, and all visitors will board the ship to watch the contest. But now, with Hule's whereabouts unknown, everything is filled with uncertainty. Arch is right, Grandpa. I heard the escape prisoner from the Shackling prison is beyond formidable. In case anything goes wrong. So, Yun Li, what do you think we should do? Well, hmm. I believe we should declare martial law and allocate manpower to search for the escape prisoners. And as for the war dance, it's better to announce an indefinite delay for now. <sighs> Your plan sounds solid, but unfortunately solid plans rarely get a chance to be implemented. I believe there are at least two parties who won't accept your approach. First are the many travelers who have come all the way here for the war dance. If we declare martial law now, it's like declaring that the law foo isn't safe. How do you think the outsiders would react? They'd be terrified, and chaos might ensue. The second party is the staff of the Xianzhou Law Fu's six commissions. They've invested a lot of resources and manpower into organizing the war dance. Suddenly suspending it indefinitely would create numerous challenges for them. But of course, not everyone disagrees with your idea. Uh, really? The mastermind behind this incident would fully support your opinion, presumably. 
Hule's escape and the discovery of Boris and spies at Stargazer and Avalia. Hmm. A child could guess that these events were orchestrated. The fugitive is just one piece in the game. The one controlling the pieces wants to spread chaos and suspicion among the people on the law fool. If we declare martial law and postpone the war dance, we'll fall into their trap and instill fear in people even before Hule actually does anything. So what do we do? We'll search for the prisoners while maintaining order on the law fool. Acting as if nothing has happened. As if nothing has happened? Yen Ching said he'd assist the generals, and now he's nowhere to be found. <laughs> With the host ringmaster gone, how are we supposed to act like nothing has happened? That's why I called the two of you here. General Huayan, are you asking me to take Yun Ching's place as the ringmaster? You caught on quickly, Miss March. That's exactly what I mean. But Miss March is a guest invited by General Jing Yuan, Grandpa. How can an outsider represent the Lawful in the ring? It will make the Sienja Lawful a laughingstock. Dear child, the nameless of the Astral Express are renowned throughout the cosmos. It's an honor to have them participate in the ceremony. Plus, Miss March is a disciple of the little Cloud Knight Lieutenant. How can she be regarded as an outsider? We can't afford to have any problems during the war dance. I'm entrusting you not only with the honor of the ring, but also with the security of the Sky Splitter. You come. Please explain to them the rest of the arrangements. I am sorry for our improper management, and I truly appreciate your assistance, General. There is no need to apologize. We Cloud Knights fight on the battlefield while you judges punish the criminals. We are two sides of the same Sienjo Law Fu, and it is my honor to serve the Ten Lords Commission. I've grasped the situation of the prison break. Now tell me more about the current state of the Shackling prison. Borison infiltrated the prison in disguise and released the prisoners, spreading chaos. Among the judges on duty in the four divisions, Judge Xueyi from the Detention Division was killed, and is temporarily unavailable. So, I'm taking over her duties and commanding Arumaton Spectral Envoys and Spiritfarers to quickly restore order in the affected areas. I, and the two behind me, will go deeper into the prison to investigate. But, General, the situation inside is still chaotic and perilous. Your presence would be... It's common for Cloud Knight Generals to face danger directly. Hule has escaped, and the Yao Qing envoy is being held hostage by the Borisin. His fate is unknown. This is a grave matter. Not only did the Merlin's Claw offer no reproach, she decided to go after Hule herself to prevent further calamity. I believe the Law Fu owes her something in return for her fervent determination. How did the Infiltrators learn about the location where Hule was held? And how did they time their plan just before the Yao Qing messengers were ready to escort him? Finding the answer to these questions shouldn't be too difficult. What truly matters is if we can gather the clues that lead us to the mastermind behind all of this. I understand, but I'm afraid it won't be an easy task. For a long time, this hidden force has been pursuing their own goals and undermining the security of the Law Fu. Backing down now will only encourage them to further endanger the peace here. The Ten Lords Commission will support your decision with everything we have, General. Dan Hong and Ling Shan, 
I'll need both of you to accompany me on this challenging journey. Well, it's part of my responsibilities as the Cauldron Master. So, where would you like to start, General? Let's start with those Borisu disguised as fox suits. My people have already prepared the evidence. According to Lieutenant Yenching's report, he stumbled upon a few suspicious Boxians at Stargazer Navalia. After following them, he discovered that they were actually Borison in disguise. This is one of the bodies. <sighs> Looking at him now, it's hard to imagine how he transformed into a Foxian. My alchemist detected some... complex ingredients in his remains, which might explain how these Borison were able to disguise themselves as Foxians. Simply put, Foxians and Borison share a common ancestry, Although they look completely different now, there isn't much genetic difference between them. This medicine allows Borzin to temporarily change their shape into that of Foxians. So, in other words, if they stop taking the medicine, their true form will soon be revealed? Indeed. This means that these Borzin have a steady supply of the medicine within the Lafu. <sighs> the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Looks like the Alchemy Commission is involved once again. Hmm. When I was sorting through the prescriptions they use, I came across one called Semblance Reversion Essence. It's designed to help those Disciples suppress signs of their Maristruck forms and maintain their normal appearance. When I compared it to the medicine found in the Borson's body... They're one and the same, aren't they? The medicinal properties and ingredients may differ, but the principle remains the same. Since ancient times, the Borison have always sought to have more powerful bodies, regarding the Foxians as weaklings. Yet, in order to save their warhead, they were willing to disguise themselves as Foxians. Their determination is quite remarkable. If these infiltrators rely on the medicine to maintain their disguise, then following this lead in our investigation seems prudent. Please follow me. Here we are. According to the judge, this area is not yet under control. We should proceed cautiously. I've captured the nature of the medicine in my sensor. By following the medicinal fumes, we should be able to retrace the steps of the disguised Borison. <laughs> Incredible strength! The attacker shattered this warden's bones with a single blow. Such brute strength is not something an ordinary Borison possesses. This is likely the work of Hule. If I may be so bold to ask, is this Borison truly that formidable? I have lived a bit longer and engaged in a few more battles than you, Miss Lingshaw. To the Alliance, Borison have always been the most formidable adversaries. And Hule is a monster feared even among his own kind. With his strength, Hule united numerous Borison pacts, forming a grand army of abominations of abundance. They constantly pushed the Alliance's armies into perilous positions. Over seven centuries ago, I followed my mentor on a campaign against the abominations. And I personally witnessed the devastation on the battlefield after Hule appeared. Even with medicinal pellets that suppress the fear caused by his lupitoxin, countless Cloud Knights succumbed to panic in the face of his murderous aura. They couldn't even raise a hand in resistance. If the former sword champion hadn't immobilized Hule with her frost blade, 
the outcome of that fateful battle could have been very different. By the end of the battle, only a few of us remained. The crimson moon cast the sheen of blood on all. Everything I saw was painted dark red. If that's the case, why wasn't the beast executed instead of being imprisoned? <sighs> on the Sienjo Jumi, the judges cast those unforgivable and nearly immortal abominations of abundance into the eternal flames of the stars, reducing them to ashes. Their so-called immortality is just a facade. I mean, nothing can truly defy death, can it? I just don't understand why the Lafu kept this tumor for so long, leading to the terrible situation we're facing now. But I guess I understand. The people of the Lafu are known for their kindness. Even when faced with the malignant tumor within the Alchemy Commission, they couldn't bring themselves to cut it out. Instead, they exiled the healer who tried to solve the problem to the Sienjo Jun. I understand if you hold grudges against me, Miss Ling Shao. I take the blame for the resurgence of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. As for why Hule was only in prison, I can shed some light on that too. I'm just a healer. I'm not familiar with the past. I'd appreciate it if you could enlighten me, General. All right. Let me tell you more about it as we go. The creature in the burner is quite impressive. Did this Cloud Knight also take the medicine? No. This is a Boris in disguise. Algar killed him before he could return to his original form. All these Borisin are dressed in official attire. Besides the Cloud Knight, there were also two Borisin disguised as members of the Skyframe Commission and the Artisanship Commission. Whoever is providing them with official identities must hold the position of power. Let's search elsewhere. and drained almost all of his blood while he was still alive. <sighs> Such a cruel and ruthless act. Does 
despite being a long-lived species, horse and are actually more like predatory beasts that must feed on raw blood and flesh. I've heard that Hule was deprived of food and water in the Shackling prison. It's hard to imagine how he managed to suppress his hunger for over seven centuries. Will the hostage from the Yaoqing be able to avoid being his meal? Such is the terrible nature of the abominations of abundance. We subjected him to the forest of swords to drain his life force. But in the end, his punishment turned into a test of our patience. Just like you said, Miss Lucha. Casting a creature that can't be killed into a star would be a way to permanently get rid of it. But unfortunately... The Foxians didn't agree to that. Exactly. The atrocities committed by Hule went beyond the massacres. Throughout numerous wars, we made every effort to eradicate the Boris. But Hule, with his mysterious sorcery, turned countless Foxians into his pawns. So the Boris kept returning. The Foxians curse his name day and night, and they even use it to scare children into staying quiet. How could they grant a swift death to such a great sinner? I wonder if you know why Hule wasn't taken into custody by the Foxian majority Sienjo Yaoqing, but instead imprisoned in the Sienjo Luofu, Miss Lincha. As you mentioned, your mentor was an exceptional warrior and was the one who defeated Hule, an extraordinary achievement. Therefore, the Marshal placed this feral beast under the jurisdiction of the Sienjo Lafu as an honor, I assume? It seems you have a major misunderstanding about this arrangement, Miss Lincha. Allow me to explain it. Yen Ching told me that an IPC ship was attacked by Boris. Is this what they were transporting on the ship? Yes. The Artisanship Commission and Alchemy Commission conducted a joint examination and found that... ...parts of this machine are made from specially refined Borisin bio-tissue. I heard the Intelligentsia Guild has been researching the biological properties of long-life species, hoping to make medical or combat-related discoveries. However, they haven't dared to cross any lines due to their so-called relationship with the Alliance. Perhaps to those scholars, Borison are no different from lab animals. Maybe the Borison attacked that ship to retaliate against the Intelligentsia Guild for... experimenting on them? No. If it were only about revenge, they could just wreck the ship and destroy all the cargo, instead of allowing it to end up in the Shackling Prison. It was a deliberate display to showcase the dangerous nature of the cargo in broad daylight. This way, the cargo would end up in the Shackling Prison, serving as a tool for the prison break. This skill in exploiting the blind spots of others' mindsets is so typical of them. I'm afraid the IPC and the Intelligentsia Guild unknowingly became their accomplices. Watch out! This thing is still alive! I'm 
bring some secure attacks? Their imitation of Hawkins my question about why Hu Lei was imprisoned in the La Fu instead of the Yao Qing general. You've been reserved in your response. Could it be that such an arrangement wasn't an honor? The reason why the Marshal didn't leave Hu Lei on the Yao Qing lies in the very mech in front of us. Are you suggesting that there are people trying to understand Hu Lei's secrets and use them for their own purposes? Just like with this mech? <sighs> well, I understand. I've heard that the Foxians on the Yao Qing share a bloodline with the Borsin. And just like the Borsin, some of the Foxians there experience an uncontrollable insanity called Moon Rage. The Marshal believed that this would be inhumane and no different from what the Borsin did, so. Exactly. While Borison see Moon Rage as a blessing that unlocks their true potential, Foxians see it as an inevitable curse within their bloodline. Countless healers of the Yao Qing have attempted to unravel this mystery, but to no avail. Why can Borison control the power of Moon Rage? Can we Foxians break free from this curse? These questions were asked frequently. Each questioner had good intentions. <sighs> but the road to catastrophe is paved with good intentions. To the Foxians of the Yao Qing, Hu Lei was not only the warhead of the Borisin, but also a monster that could be the subject of much research. Hu Lei thus became a poison that corrupted people's minds without their knowing. That's why the Marshal decided to imprison Hu Lei and the La Fu. It wasn't an honor, but rather a warning. Because such selfish pursuits in the name of good intentions once led to a tragedy on the La Fu that served as a warning to future generations. <sighs> the sedition of Imbibitor Lune. <sighs> By imprisoning Hu Lei and the Xianzhou La Fu, the Marshal both suppressed the dangerous intentions of the Yao Qing Foxians and warned the Xianzhou La Fu to refrain from repeating its mistake. That was a necessary trade off. The Xianzhou Alliance is not solely about the Xianzhou natives. Only when all three races, Foxian, Vidyadora, and Xianzhou natives, form an alliance, will there be a promising future for all. Thank you for enlightening me. Was it for the same reason that you traded off my mentor to the Xianzhou Zhu Ming, only to stand idle and allow the resurgence of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus? You said that I couldn't bear to cut out the malignant tumor within the Alchemy Commission, but instead exiled the healer who tried to solve the problem to the Xianzhou Zhu Ming. But did your mentor tell you her good intentions? led her to perform certain healing arts on Dun Hung, who had just finished his hatching rebirth, <sighs> so that he would regain the memories of his past life. What, what did, did you, you just say? say? She believed that restoring the High Elder's knowledge of his past life would allow the Vidyadara to resume their duty as the guardians of the Ambrosial Arbor, quelling the strife within their clan and bringing everything back on the right path. But just as I mentioned earlier, the road to catastrophe is always paved with good intentions. Since then, 
the six charioteers decided that the Alchemy Commission would no longer have a cauldron master. Until your arrival now. Uh, if that's the case, I should thank you for protecting my mentor by exiling her, General. Quite the contrary. I should be the one thanking you. Thanking me? All I ever want is to have a clear conscience. However, can long life species truly achieve that goal in their long drawn lives? For example, you were implicated along with your mentor and forced to leave your homeland without knowing the truth. And now, with the complicated situation in the Alchemy Commission, the Alliance has spared me a lot of trouble by sending you to handle this challenging task. Shouldn't I be thanking you instead? Your eloquence is indeed impressive, the Divine Foresight. He won't even leave me any excuses to hold a grudge against you. But, let me make it clear. The Alliance sent me here to handle the business impartially, not to choose sides. It doesn't matter which side you choose, Miss Lingshaw. At the end of the day, both you and I stand on the side of the Alliance, don't we? Let's keep going. Struck soldiers don't appear to be escaped prisoners. How can you tell? These soldiers are fully armed. Obviously, they didn't hastily join the battle. The messenger named Morza did say that there were two groups of attackers. The other attackers, aside from the Borison, could hide their tracks. I believe he was referring to these people. Hide their tracks. Exactly. I've engaged with these attackers before, and they used cloud hymn magic to hide their presence. Without careful observation, no one can detect them. You once warned me to be cautious of the Vidyadar Elder's influence within the Alchemy Commission. Could it be? What's on your mind, Miss Lingshaw? Well, it seems that someone provided the attackers with a map of the Shackling Prison. And considering the Vidyadra's involvement in the prison's construction, it raises suspicion about their role in this. Additionally, the fact that the Borison need medicine to disguise themselves would suggest that there are still moles within the Alchemy Commission assisting them covertly. Moreover, Forging official identities for the undercover Borson would require someone with significant authority. And the presence of assassins capable of using cloud hymn magic deepens my suspicion about the preceptors. But why would the Vidyadar collude with the Borson and Aiden who plays escape? They aim to spread chaos. They believe that only in chaos can they regain their former power and influence. Since this edition of Imbiber de Lune, the once proud dragon race has been powerless, watching their influence wane. Being a native of the Lo Fu, Miss Ling Sha, I believe you understand the implications. However, I don't think the preceptors are the true masterminds. If I'm not mistaken, the one behind all this treachery is the Lord Ravager who exploited the weaknesses within the Lord Food and instigated the disciples of Sanctus Medicus 
ultimately leading to the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. Fentilia. Please remember, General, that everything I've mentioned is mere speculation. We need concrete evidence for a public trial. If you want to interrogate someone within the Vidyadara's ranks, you'll need irrefutable proof. So, what's your plan, Miss Lingsha? I'll send an invitation to the Preceptors. An invitation? The Preceptors have been inviting me for a personal meeting since my arrival on the Lafu. Now, I'll send them the remains of these Mara-struck soldiers and the route map I found in the prisoner's possession. Then, I'll ask them to meet me at Scale Gorge Waterscape. I'd like to hear their explanations. Good idea. If I were to take action, it might alert the true mastermind. I trust you to handle this matter, Miss Lingshaw. The internal affairs of the Vidyadara should remain under their jurisdiction. And don't worry if things don't go smoothly. Once the wolf hunt operation is over, the hidden truths will come to light. Speaking of the wolf hunt operation, I'm truly worried about the Yao Qing messenger who was taken hostage. Hu Lei was starving in the shackling prison for centuries. I don't know if the messenger can survive in that wolf's clutches. May Rainbow's blessing keep him safe. As I said, I'm a healer. But my art of healing requires the culinary arts to be truly effective. The magic of my cauldron is its ability to make all kinds of medicines into dishes that patients can eat. When simmered and cooked together, any kind of medicinal herb or ingredient becomes a delightful delicacy. Delicacy? But isn't that just one flavor overpowering the others? Well, you have a point. Let me ask you this. If there's a fussy child who refuses to eat green peppers, what's the best way to make him eat them? Stuff the kid's mouth with the green peppers and cook him alive in a pot. <laughs> you have quite the sense of humor. I've heard that you, Borison, have lost many of your taste buds during the self-modification process. So you can't experience complex flavors. Only the saltiness of blood and flesh truly awakens your appetite. It's a shame I don't have any green peppers right now. Otherwise, I'd happily stuff them into your mouth and cook you alive in a pot. I'm just kidding. The answer is quite simple. Chop up the peppers and mix them with minced meat to make meatballs. This way, the flavor of the meat overpowers the taste of the peppers. And even a fussy child can enjoy them. Can I just boil your tongue in this hot pot? I know you're trying to buy time until someone comes to your rescue. You said that Jin Liu recently returned to the La Fu, right? Well, she did come back. But, unfortunately, I also found out that she committed serious crimes and was escorted to another Sienjo ship. Do you really think you can delay our departure? by provoking Lord Hule's desire for revenge with your clever little tongue. You see Borison as savages who know nothing about the Sienjo, but in fact, we know all about your tracking tricks. Like the jade abacus you're carrying, and the side cranes in the sky. <sighs> The more hope you hold in your heart, the greater your pain will be when death comes. I wonder if you can maintain your composure when I tear your throat open. Mm. This composure is only a temporary effect of the medicine. And it will wear off soon, 
right. Lord Hule. Oh, you pathetic Foxians. For thousands of years, we were the ones who allowed you to live and who granted you civilization. But in the end, you chose to betray us for the freedom promised by the Sienjo people. <laughs> but it's all right. As long as you catch the scent of your masters, you obediently return to us, no matter how far you run away. Run away, you said? Well, I'm not the one who's trying to run away right now. The Borisans' era has long passed. Did they ever tell you these harsh facts before giving you hope for returning home? Lord Hule. Now they're being crushed by the Merlin's claw of the Yao Qing, by a Foxian. They're hiding in remote corners of the cosmos, trembling with fear like a wounded beast on its last legs, reaching out desperately for any fake hope of salvation, which in this case is you. The Merlin's claw of the Yao Qing. A Foxian? <laughs> Very interesting. Tell me, Mock Talk. Is he speaking the truth? He isn't lying. That lowly beast was a war slave who ran away from our pack. Cannon fodder, a thief! She stole our power and used her knowledge about us to fight us, using every dirty trick in the book! And she bested you, Mock Talk. Fairness is but a pathetic excuse for the dead and defeated. Hmm. Since our great pack has fallen apart, who told you that I was alive? And who sent you here? In our darkest hours, it was a prophet of the Master of Immortality, named Mangus who showed us the way. Her guidance brought us hope. This prophet, Mongus, what does she want? The prophet made this proclamation. The Borison have been divided for too long, and only your return can unite all the packs, restoring us to our former glory. That's when we learned that you were still alive. And the Prophet told us that the Foxy in general of the Yao Qing would take you to her ship during the La Fu's war dance. And that it would be our best chance to infiltrate and free you from your prison. And just as she said, we did it. Even if you managed to set Hule free, you'd have no way to escape. We've already prepared our ships, and the Prophet's prediction will surely come true. Once the news about the prison break spreads, the Cloud Knights will close all the ports. You may think you've escaped the prison, but you're just trapped in another cage known as the Law Fu. Let me kill this unruly, lowly beast, Lord Hule! I assure you that our star skiffs will soon arrive. Right now, everyone in the La Fu is distracted by the stupid war dance. So this will be the perfect chance to escape. Once you've returned to your territory, your revenge against the Sienjo ships will be within reach. Perfect chance to return to my weak and shattered pack at the mercy of a ridiculous false prophet and become a mere puppet in her clutches. <laughs> her plan is full of flaws. The only paths she has prepared for you are escape and death. Listen up. A wolf never allows itself to become prey. From now on, You'll follow my orders. 
Since you are so confident that the Cloud Knights will close the ports, Jiao Cho, I'm now giving you a chance to go and see it for yourself. Go to the ports, come back, and tell me what you saw. Wait, what did you just say? But my lord! Would an alpha wolf ever listen to a cob, Mock Talk? No, I've never heard anything like that. I... I wasn't trying to defy your will. I will always unquestioningly follow your orders. I'm offering you a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Don't you want to run away, Zhao Cho? <laughs> you will come back. Because foxes like you always obediently return to their masters. No matter how far they run away. Water! Oh, I need some water! What the heck was I thinking? If I knew it ended like this, I would have stayed in the shackling prison. Better to live in shackles and die free. Let me take a look. I can help you out. Are you a healer? Please, bandage me up. I, I don't want to die. Although Hule and his followers can currently hide in the city, won't be long before they're found. What was he planning when he let me go? I don't fully understand Lord Hule's intentions, but don't think you can simply run away. Understood? You know why I'm letting you go. Because foxes like you always obediently return to their masters, no matter how far they run away. Head to the port and report back to me. Let's see if they really close it like you expected. I can't believe he actually let me go. What game is he playing? Perhaps I can try to warn the Cloud Knights. No. Perhaps I can just escape. Just as I suspected, he's testing me. The Cloud Knights must have been aware of the situation inside the Shackling Prison for some time. Will General Fei Xiao personally lead a squad to capture Hule? For now, I'll do as he asked.
Would you like to board my star skiff? Well, my little star skiff can't accommodate that many. But I have a larger one that will arrive in less than 15 minutes if you need it. So, where would you like to go? We need to hurry wherever we're going. The war dance is about to start, and the Skyfaring Commission is prioritizing star skiffs heading to the Sky Splitter. Keep what quiet? <laughs> Come on, spill it if you have something to say. <laughs> I've been in this business for almost a century. You won't find a safer star skiff around here. I'm sorry, but the Realm Keeping Commission Chancery is currently closed. All the officers and officials have been reassigned to assist in the war dance. Hey, although we're short-staffed at the moment, if there's anything I can do to help, please feel free to ask me. Hey there. I noticed you'd been looking at me for quite a while. Do you need my help? Could you please provide more details? What? Uh, are you sure about that? Wait... I recognize you. You're the lost Yaoqing messenger. How are you here? I was brought here by the Borison. Please make sure to report this news. All right. I'll call for reinforcements. Stop asking. I'm off duty now. Go bother someone else. Can't you just stop asking? You're not one of us, but I smell a familiar scent on you. The Warhead sent me here to check on the situation. Instead, the Skyfaring Commission is clearing routes to prioritize star skiffs heading to the Sky Splitter. This will make our ships more noticeable when we try to escape. The ports haven't been closed? What is going on? 
stalling won't help. It's time to confront Hule and see what tricks he's up to. You're back, Jiao Cho. Come and take a good look. Who is this person? Oh, don't worry. This captain will help us. What are you trying to do, Mok Tuck? They have nothing to do with this. Nothing to do? I told you to go to the port and check out the situation. But I never gave you permission to talk with others. Remember... This person died because of you. You want to prove to me that you hold everyone's lives in your hands, right, Hule? <laughs> oh, exactly as you said. So, have the Cloud Knights closed the ports? <laughs> no. Hmm. They don't want to publicize my escape. I understand. It's no surprise, for fear is more deadly than claws and fangs. Especially during a festive time like the war dance. What lurks here is not a group of fugitives, but rather a pack of wolves amidst the flock. My cubs are hungry, ready to feast on flesh and blood, reveling in your fear. Your calm facade will soon crumble. I can tear through it and expose your pathetic bones any time. There's no escape from me. Jiao Cho. Of course, you can try your luck and believe that your wits will save you. But remember, you're not the only hostage in this city. If you try anything funny, innocent people will die because of you. Now, let's talk about the Foxy in general you serve. Moktok says she's here for me, which means she'll be hunting me herself. Before the hunt begins, I need to know my opponent. You can refuse and play tough, or you can cooperate and save us both some time, healer. Good. At least you didn't try to draw attention with a scream. That way no one will die in vain. But remember, the next time you refuse me, I'll crush your healing hands, then your knees, then your spine. I'll dismantle you piece by piece until only your silver tongue remains for you to speak. Fine. I'll tell you what you want to know about her. But I expect something in return. <laughs> what makes you think you're still in a position to negotiate with me? You can torture me until I talk. Or, let's save us both some time, Warhead. Here's the question that's been bothering me. How have you managed to survive and endure centuries of torture? Borison aren't supposed to live that long. 
or possess such regenerative abilities. So, is that why the Shenzhou Yao Qing wanted to take me away? <laughs> oh, to some, I'm a hostage, but to others, I hold the secrets they desire. Oh, I still remember, in the early years of my captivity, the Foxians came and went. They extracted my blood and marrow, trying to unravel the mystery of Moon Rage. They wanted to conquer their fear of the Burison and free themselves from their bloodline. Unfortunately, they failed to uncover the secret. So, they resorted to the most brutal punishments they could imagine. Some seek power to destroy their enemies, while others seek power to become their enemies. Which one are you, Jiao Chou? Ah, oh, I see. You're the most pitiful of them all, Hilo the Yao Qing. You seek power to share it with others and do good. Well, then let me tell you the answer you seek. In our ancient legends, Duran, the ancestor of the Borison, was dissatisfied with his limited lifespan and power. He yearned to dominate the skies and become the master of all the stars. To achieve his goal, he sacrificed the lives of countless Borison and Foxians, pouring them into the spring bestowed by the Master of Immortality. Through a form of genetic sorcery, the water gave birth to a miracle. The Lunar Embryo. Duran ascended the birthing bed and obtained what he desired, a heart in the shape of a deep red full moon. He cut open his chest and replaced his original heart with this crimson moon. Laugh all you want, but only I know the truth behind every word. Mm. This moon heart beats within the body of every generation of the Borison Warhead. In the ritual that decides the new Warhead, the successor cuts open the previous Warhead's chest and consumes the Divine Heart, thus possessing it as their own. Oh, devouring is the true essence of life, allowing us to endure and thrive. It gathers the life essence of all the prey we consume, making us stronger and stronger. I thought all hope was lost after seven centuries of torment. But now, this heart is beating once again. <laughs> all right. Now it's your turn to tell me everything about the Merlin's Claw. Jiao Cho, I found you. I know I'm in no position to question your orders, but if I understand correctly, you already have intelligence about the Borison? That's right. My people are busy collecting clues now. What's the situation, Mwadza? General, before we completely lost contact with Zhao Cho, I picked up a signal from his Jade Abacus. It won't take long before we locate their whereabouts. If that's the case, shouldn't we immediately go there and join forces to eliminate the Borison? Why are we returning to Stargazer Nivalia? 
Looks like your general has only taught you swordplay, not the art of the hunt. There's an old saying among the Borson. In the forest, the hunter may easily become the hunted. While we may call ourselves the hunters now, chasing them blindly will only make us become the prey. Are you joking, General? He's just a wolf who's been imprisoned for seven centuries. Even with his accomplices, they're no match for us numerous Lawfu Cloud Knights. How could he consider us his prey? Do not underestimate the enemy. Hule is not an ordinary Borson that can be easily killed. The advantage in numbers means nothing when we face that monster. A vicious beast who hasn't tasted blood and flesh in seven centuries is now lurking on the streets of the Lafu right before the war dance. This is what makes the situation treacherous and unpredictable. To him, the lives of ordinary people are just meat, ready to be devoured at any moment. Exactly. That is why we must succeed in our first strike or the situation will spiral out of control. You've heard of this military tactic, right? When you surround your enemy, leave one side open for them to escape. A skilled hunter must be well prepared, waiting for the prey at the most advantageous position. What would we do if we were the escapees from the Shackling prison? While we can disguise ourselves and blend in with the crowd, we don't plan on staying here for long. In this case, what do we need most now? A star skiff to get us out of the Lafu. The Borison we discovered at Stargazer Navalia were actually preparing a vessel for their escape. We predict their next move, and we take them down. Let's start from where you found those Borison and corner our This is where we ran into the Borison last time. It looks the same as usual. Because I blocked all the relevant news to make it seem as if nothing had happened. Losing contact with their accomplices preparing the Star Skiff will surely put them on guard. However, the more well prepared a plan is, the longer it takes to adjust when it's disrupted. If any Borson wants to stick to the original plan despite the risks, they'll surely come back to Stargazer Navalia to check the situation. Are you suggesting that there are Borison here at Stargazer Navalia right now? This is an automated area. So don't you think that there are a bit too many people here today? First, look at those two Skyfaring Commission staff members. They've been observing us in secret since we arrived here. Then, there's a Cloud Knight soldier over there. Perhaps he's here for patrol. But each patrol team must consist of two members. And obviously, he is not following the rules. Lastly, there's that craftsman wearing Artisanship Commission clothing. He's unusually focused on checking that device. If you have a target in mind, Let's go investigate. Hey, 
Hey, you there! Please refrain from wandering around Stargazer Navalia if you're not... Oh, it's you, Lieutenant Yenqing. No, not at all. Actually, I'm here to address a peculiar issue. A peculiar issue? Yeah. We've had some unscheduled star skiffs being constructed at this dock in Stargazer Navalia. Could there have been an error in the production planning for the assembly line? This is just weird. I thought all the pending star skiffs from before the war dance had been scheduled already. I'm sorry, but I need to focus on my work right now. If you have any questions, we can discuss them later. Are you? Don't you know that Stargazer and Avalia is on lockdown now? Hey, chill out. They're just a few lost tourists. Stargazer Navalia is the shipbuilding port of the Sienjo Lafu. If the Skyfaring Commission called for a lockdown, there should be official documents proving it, right? Official documents? <laughs> of course there are. The Cloud Knights are aware that some people have infiltrated this port. <sighs> that makes perfect sense. So you're now investigating the Borison? Yeah. We've received orders from the higher-ups, so we've blocked off this area to prevent any interference with our inspection. Thank you for your understanding. Ah, <sighs> oh, Lieutenant Yanxing! And, uh, General Fischel? You're aware of the Boris in prison break, right? Yeah, I've received the news. And I'll be on the alert. Looks like you've been keeping an eye on the Sky Splitter. Have you noticed anything unusual? No. Everything is normal on the ship. Nothing out of the ordinary. This is not a location for a Cloud Knight on guard duty, is it? Well, this spot offers a great view. Are you here to keep an eye on the Sky Splitter? Yes. You've been observing the Sky Splitter for a while. Have you noticed anything? Honestly, just watching the ship from here isn't too thrilling. I wish I could go on board and witness Lieutenant Yen Xing's contests. Speaking of which, Lieutenant Yen Xing, aren't you supposed to be on the Sky Splitter? Is it alright for you to be here instead? Thank you for your concern, but I have more pressing matters to attend to. <sighs> so, it seems that some Borison have returned to Stargazer Navalia in disguise. The answer seems quite obvious. <sighs> I believe he was just slacking off. In my opinion, the staff members from the Skyfaring Commission appear more suspicious. Remember when I mentioned that the Cloud Knights blocked all relevant news to make it seem as if nothing happened? Stargazer Navalia is not under lockdown. But on the contrary, those staff members use Stargazer Navalia as on lockdown as an excuse to persuade us to leave. This contradicts the Cloud Knights' plans. Their flimsy disguise has been exposed. Even if they try to hide, there's no way they can escape us. Why are you still here? As I said, Stargazer Navalia is on lockdown now. No. 
I never issued such an order. Who are you? Perhaps you haven't met me on the battlefield, but I am certain you've heard my name. Now I'm asking you a question, so answer me. Tell me. How many more of your comrades are here? Where were you planning to meet Hule? This woman. She's the general of the Yao Xing. What are you still waiting for? Attack her! <laughs> Measure of truth and also Please or devil. Because I need answers. <laughs> you were our war slave. So you should know us descendants of Duran. You want me to talk? <laughs> Fine. Try whatever you want. But I assure you, you won't get anything from me. Only fangs and blood. If I were to do that, I wouldn't be any different from you. I am the arrow that pierces the wolf's heart. I grant you a swift death. <laughs> That's exactly what I desire. Wolves that leave the pack are prepared for the fate of never returning home. But sadly, you didn't catch my partner. He will alert them. Before you close your eyes, you should know that I allowed him to escape because he will lead the Cloud Knights to Hule's hideout. Is this how you leave one side open? You let that Borison escape so you could track him? This is the most common hunting tactic used by Borison. I know the methods of these abominations all too well. They always leave an escape route for their prey, allowing them to flee in fear. Then they chase them like it's a game. Borison get great satisfaction from the last struggles of their victims. Have you witnessed these things firsthand? That guy called you a war slave. What exactly have you experienced? Well, just a hazy past that I can barely recollect. Long ago, I was one of them. The word Borison was only used to refer to those wolf masters. I'm a Foxian who was born in one of the fallen territories. In their eyes, we're mere consumables. Cannon fodder used to slow down Sanjo attacks on the battlefield. But you survived. And not only that, you became the general of the Yao Cheng. If I get the chance, I'd love to hear stories of your past, General. Speaking of stories, you've reminded me that now is not the time for them. Wadza, we've sent the warning from Stargazer Navalia. 
What's the situation on your end? I found them. Zhao Cho is trying to stall Hulei, and he signaled me to not reveal myself. Trust his judgment and keep watching. We'll be right there. I believe the warning we sent will stop Hulei from attacking Stargazer Navalia. <sighs> what will he do next? The hunt is not over yet. Stay safe, Zhao Cho. <laughs> I want to live, Doctor. Zhao Zhao, find the medical ingenium and give that kid a shot. Hurry! I... I see. How is the front line? The Boris and Beast ships have already landed on the Feng Hu. It won't be long before this place is overrun as well. What about General Yueyu? Any news from her? I'm her healer. I should stay by her side at a time like this. She asked me to tell you that she's not coming back. She must protect the Cloud Pier telescope. General asks you to... to save that kid. The girl fought desperately just to bring us all back here alive. I've never seen such a brutal fighting style. Her body... It's like she was split open. Just like... Oh, her blood pressure is dropping. Do you hear me, Zhao Zhao? Loud and clear. Get me some tumble dust. We've got to start the operation right now. I... I will bring her back. Is that why you're so determined to learn my secrets? Do you hear me, Zhao Cho? I do. Loud and clear. So she saved you all in that great battle on the Xiangzhou Feng Hu three decades ago. But to your surprise, you discovered her boars and bloodline while she was at death's door. Moktok told me that she was a war slave who escaped from the Eclipse Pack. Oh, what a twist of fate. Turns out, she's from the same clan as I am. Now I understand. No wonder she displayed such astounding power, determination, and cruelty in battle. Out, it's all because of her force and bloodline. Mutt. Despicable Mutt. <laughs> and she used the gift of her bloodline to destroy the Borison. <laughs> ah. Moon Rage. A blessing for wolves. And a curse for foxes. For Borison, to have their bodies torn apart by moon rage and transform into a beast oh, is the ultimate joy. But for you Foxians with poor regenerative abilities, it means certain death. Oh, with the burning fury in her heart, that Foxy in general will eventually lose her sanity and indulge in endless bloodshed. The scars on her body will not be caused by enemy weapons, but by the immense power she can't withstand. One day, she will be torn apart and die as a monster. And in return for saving her life, you intend to give everything to solve this impossible puzzle. Hule, do you know the saddest thing about being a healer? All this time, I've devoted my life 
to bringing back those who sacrificed their lives to monsters like you. I exhausted myself, and my hands trembled. But I believed everything I did was meaningful. But once again, they rushed into battle. Then I heard of their deaths. They died under your claws. In your jaws. Amidst the flames of crashing star skiffs. And under the Lux arrow of rainbow. Like a useless idiot. I saved a fish named Life out of the cauldron called death, only to watch it struggle, dive back into the boiling broth. So I asked myself, why were they so eager to run toward their death after they had recovered from their wounds? Why wouldn't they value their hard-won life? All the doubts left me feeling lost. <laughs> I can smell your desperation. All the way down to your bone marrow. Eventually, I realized that their deaths held value. They placed the weight of their sacrifice on the living. Granting us strength. With a coin forged by their deaths, they exchanged something more in return. Everything I'm doing now, following you so closely, is just for one reason. Witnessing your death with my own two eyes. Even your death has value. It will pave the way for a peaceful war dance and a fully cured fish owl. Hmm. The thoughts in your pathetic head are hardly surprising. Did you already know this? Yes, I did. As Borison, we understand the value of death more than anyone. And as a healer who has witnessed so much death, you won't be swayed by fear. Mm, what a shame, what a shame. Your story actually sparked a trace of respect for you in my heart. Can you even feel respect? With your corrupted heart? Hmm, of course because I caught a whiff of my own kind in you. Unfortunately, in the end, you're still just a weak fox. As the wolf's creed goes, gift the wolf a dead end where new paths arise. Raise him to a doomed fate where satiation lies. The cowards in forgotten corners meet their unworthy demise. Yet the valorous in brutal battles embrace their eternal prize. That's why I'm keeping you alive for now. I want to show you how Burrison truly respect their enemies. We will consume your flesh and blood, nourishing our own. We will crush your hopes and dreams, clearing a path for our hunt. Your feeble souls will witness a new future. A future that belongs to me. My lord, we received a message. Our arrangement at Stargazer Navalia has been discovered. We must act quickly. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. <clears throat> Mock talk. What's that noise? It's the sky splitter. 
the ship that the war dance will be held on is about to set off. The Sky Faring Commission will clear the air routes. And if our star skiffs try to escape, we'll be spotted. Calm down, Moktok. Look at you now, hiding and fearful. Where is your Boris and dignity? As I said, I'd sacrifice my dignity for your return. As long as you can come back to the Boris and Pax, there's still hope. Hope? <sighs> the Boris and have forgotten the wolf's creed. Weak creatures put their hope in the strong, but the strong fight their way out. Bringing me back instead of choosing a new master only proves the decline of our pack. And as for the prophet who manipulated you into saving me, she's just a liar trying to use Doran's offspring. <sighs> Mock talk. Let me tell you how the Burisen will rise to power. We won't hide like rats in the streets of the Xiangzhou. We will be ravenous wolves, walking amongst a herd of lambs with our fangs bared. But, Great Warhead, our packs are not here. We can't go to war like this. Our packs are not here. Wherever I go, everyone is the pack. <laughs> Stay away. Just don't come any closer. No! predators at the top of the hierarchy. As wolves, we create fear. We don't become servants to it. If you're blind to the path, I will be the crimson moon that lights the way for you. Share my crimson blood with our brethren. Use it to infect those Foxians and strike fear into their hearts. Now, you devious monkey, come out and face me. Chao Chao. Mosha. Run. No, he can't run, and neither can you. <laughs> You've come at the right time, monkey of the Yao Qing. Tell your general. Tell her that I will unleash a massacre here, drowning the Xiang Zhou La Fu in blood. From this moment on, wolves bearing my blood will hunt on every street, feasting on the followers of that devilish archer. Follow me, my cops. We shall stride among the prey. If the wolf dead end, when the new paths rise, raise him to a doom fate where satiation lies. The cowards in forgotten corners meet their unworthy demise. Yet the valorous in the brutal battles Embrace their eternal prize! Oh, do you hear that? The rumble of the cannons. Oh, it brings back all the memories of past battles within me. My return will bring back the wolf's creed. In my own way, I shall save our weakened pack and restore it to its former glory! Drums are going to burst. Well, how could they expect? 
to attract people to come and watch if they didn't make a huge spectacle. <laughs> March, you haven't forgotten what you came to do, have you? As a representative of the Sienjo La Fu, I will defeat all challengers. That's the spirit. Sounds like you're all fired up. If you could just keep your legs from shaking so much, it would be more convincing, March. As the saying goes, the disciple takes the toil of their master. Remember, you are here under the identity of a lawful swordmaster, taking the place of your no-good master Yenjing as the ringmaster. But what am I supposed to do if my opponent for this round is super talented and just wipes the floor with me in seconds? Still a beginner in swordplay. I don't know where I got the confidence when I agreed to help General Huayan. Come on, there's no need to worry about that. If you're defeated, then your opponent shall have to answer to me. Although, if that happens, the honor and the glory of the Sienjo Lawfu shall all be taken by the Juming. <laughs> oh, Master Yun Li, please, I'm about to compete. Can you say something that will give me a little confidence? March, think about the great storms that you, nameless of the Express, have weathered along your many journeys. There's no doubt that you have faced far more terrifying enemies than your opponents here today, right? Don't you feel a lot more relaxed looking at it that way? Much pressure. Oh, my stomach is really hurting. Maybe I should just drop out of the contest. You made a promise to my grandfather and now you want to run away? <laughs> Get out there! Now! Master Yunli, I don't think I'm completely ready. March? There is no such thing as completely ready. 